Hi, Denise. Thank you very much for coming to join me on my podcast. Thank you. I'm thrilled to, to share some great stuff that you'll be bringing to this podcast, but I'd love for you first to introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about your company and your enterprises. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm Denise Albert. I am the co-founder of a company called The Moms, and we, my partner, Melissa Gerstein, and I were both journalists, and we started our company 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah, it's been a long time um, because we found a conversation missing in the parenting space. Before that, I was a senior producer at ABC. She was at CNBC and CNN. And we just started this company really as a column in a newspaper and just kept having different ideas mm -hmm. and going for them. And so we've had a radio show. We've had a television show. But mainly what we do is we host events with celebrities the same way they're going on different television shows promoting their movie or a book or a philanthropy, and we host an event for them for a community of moms and for media. Um, but it's really about this incredible community of women who um, are looking for a community, a connection, a place to have conversations and learn about other people and support other women and support other entrepreneurs. And so we host what we call Mamarazzi events. I love it. And, I love it. Um, We've hosted just about 300 of these events, uh, mostly in New York and Los Angeles. And we just love people and, and connecting yeah. and hearing people's stories and creating something. And so that's what we've done. So my first takeaway when, when I hear you talk about what you do, and I am so happy that we met at another sort of event or um, experience and uh, the thing that I think we should talk about first is a little bit about you personally because you are um, the story here that you're a big part of the story like many mothers um, and women and your story is so full of inspiration and optimism and you are the epitome of optimism. And I, I think, first of all, uh, I hate starting a thing by asking someone their sign, but it's sort of like defining, first of all, your sign is what? Aries. Aries. And you were born where? April 5th in New York City. In New York City. And did you live in New York all your life? I didn't. I grew up I don't love to say it, although it's a beautiful place. <laughs> I grew up in a beautiful town called Port Washington, Long Island, uh -huh. um, which is a wonderful place to be raised. It's yeah. very diverse and a lot of really incredibly hardworking people. Yeah. But I was really bored in the suburbs. <clears throat> and so um, my dad worked in the city, my mother, would bring us, there were four kids, there were four kids in my family, and we, we came into New York a lot mm -hmm. for my dad's work and um, spent a lot of time in New York City. And I just knew at a very young age I right. needed to be here. Yeah, clearly. Um, and so let's get a little bit of your stats. How old are you? Be talk about it right away. I am 45 and proud. Okay, good. I still feel like 28. Exactly. <laughs> so do I. Right. I mean, it's, it, it, your spirit decided to hang in at 28. My spirit decided to hang in at 27. Oh, so we're so similar. Yeah. No, and so that's where I am. Yes. And I, I have no understanding of my age, as you have no understanding None. of yours, because our spirit rules, I right? I love that. That's so true. Right? Um, in fact, I, a friend of mine had nursing homes, and he was trying to incorporate a new way to approach medicating elderly and all of that. And so he said, I want you to come in and make it a happy place. So I would do photo shoots and hair and makeup. And then I would talk to the women and they were all, their spirit, they, I said, well, how old do you feel? You're 92, how old do you feel? Right. 27, right. 28. Right. And I thought that's really the key, it's yes. the spirit. So now, you, 
You have children. So I have two boys. I'm happily divorced, mm -hmm. um, which is a great way to be, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I, I know that it's hard for some people. Um, in my circumstance, we happily decided to split up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. And I think even if it's not your choice, because a lot of people don't choose that, right. then I think how you decide to live the rest of your life is really important. Mm -hmm. And so um, my parents split up when I was a teenager. And it's, you know, there's a lot of emotions involved. And I was angry with one parent and then with another. And I specifically remember a time in college where I decided, I, it was a choice, right. that I wasn't going to be angry. angry. And yeah. I wasn't going to live angry. Mm -hmm. And they made their choices. Mm -hmm. And it played out a certain way. Yeah. And I had two loving parents, and it wasn't my problem. And so I wanted to sort of recreate that for my kids. Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to have to ha have these angry feelings. So mm -hmm. I, th I think, and, and I'm lucky that my ex also, I mean, it, it hasn't always been perfect. I mean, mm -hmm. we've had problems. But, um, but, but at, the, at the core of it, we're both reasonable mm -hmm. people who love our kids, who want our kids right. to have the best of everything. And if they have two happy parents who are kind to each other most of the time, yeah. then they, that's one thing that they hopefully won't yeah. have to deal with. Yeah. yeah, it's so true. I mean, it's a big choice to make, but I think when there's anger in a household, it just makes people sick and yes. unhappy. Um, and that, that there are hard choices to make. So I am um, interviewing women as part of my Aging with Power series. And I'm interviewing women who um, are part of a decade where there are certain passages and, and transitions that take place. And so from the 20s to the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, different things happen, whether it's hormones or life passage or just a general kind of challenge of that time. There's a lot that goes on. And I have been in business over 50 years and surrounded by mostly women, 98% women, so I've seen what happens through the years and these passages. But there's nothing better than a person's story of where they are at a certain time and what's happening and what the challenges are. My goal with this is if I can help with solutions for women at different times, I, I I understand some of these solutions, and they mostly come with healthy lifestyle. But you've had, you've had quite a few challenges. You're beautiful, optimistic, just full of spirit, and never-ending ideas. Um, but I think it's important to bring the reality and present the, the reality of your particular story that I think will be helpful for people to kind of take away where you've gone with all of this. Thank you. Um, first of all, that is incredible coming from you, so thank you. I mean, I've walked on this street since I was 10 years old looking at your showroom, so, um, so thank you for that. Um, and I think beauty is confidence. Because when I wake up in the morning, this is not what you see. It's just, it's just not. It's not. I mean, I had my makeup done today called Glam Squad. <laughs> I, you know, it's $95 and worth it to be here with you. Um, this is a wig because I had cancer. Um, so my hair always looks great. <laughs> um, so I had cancer. Uh, I was diagnosed at How old 41, you? Mm -hmm. and you know, at that time, there's no, I had breast cancer, there's no cancer history in my family, there's no breast cancer history, I do not have a gene. Um, I had a lump that I felt because mm -hmm. I had a pain, and everyone says that cancer doesn't hurt, Right. but the first piece of advice that I 
like to share about any, is with any woman is if you have a change in your body, you have to listen to mm -hmm. that. Because I had a pain. People say cancer doesn't hurt. There was no cancer in my family, and I went right to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And I had had a, mo a mammography three months prior. You're kidding. No, and I got a letter in the mail that said, <clears throat> your mammography is normal, is normal. Okay, now I did not read any further because it said your mammography is normal. But when you read down, now the, the New York State law has since changed. Oh my goodness. Now the doctor, I think, has to call you. But at the time, there was no law. And it said, your mammography is normal. And then underneath it, in smaller print, it said, but you have dense breasts and you should follow up with your doctor. Now, nobody ever told me I had dense breasts. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know that you're at a higher risk for breast cancer. I didn't know that if you have dense breasts, you should also ask for a sonogram, sonogram. or an ultrasound. I had never been told that before. And, and I have the letter still. Mm -hmm. So my mammography in August of 2015 was normal. And in November, I had a pain with a lump that was breast cancer. Mm. So I listened to my body, and because of that, I'm alive. Because if I hadn't, it, you know, I think early detection is everything. everything. You, I, I want to just stay with this for a little bit, because I think this is information that I experienced too, and we should share. So this dense breast thing is very real. Um, Three weeks ago, I went for my annual breast exam also. Which is good, great. And I have very dense breasts. Every time I go, I have to have mammogram, sonogram, and sometimes go back two or three times Which at the same so time to have mammograms over again. And sometimes have biopsies. Right. And, have, and so uh, this is the norm for me. That's what I have to do. And it's always just traumatic sitting in the waiting room in your little pink gown. Mm -hmm. Everybody's looking in their phones trying not to think that I might, oh my God, I might have cancer. Is this, what's the verdict going to be here? And women go through this all the time. But if you have dense breasts and you ever hear the doctor tell you you have dense breasts, you have to take that very seriously. Very. So I sat in the waiting room in my little pink gown, um, and I had a mammogram, and then they said, you have to come back, we have to do another one. That Did another scary. one. Then they said, go back in the waiting room. You know what, we need to have you come back one more time. So now at number four, and the sonogram, I'm thinking, oh, I don't and know. Do you, and you and want the, to say to them, what do you yeah. see? And, they, and each time they yell out my name, Norma Kamali, and these women look up <laughs> <Right>. because... <laughs> Norma Kamali, and it's like, oh my God. And so there's tissue that's folding over everything, and I said, we, we're, we're okay with it. But yes, come back, same time next year, no matter what. So this dense breast situation, is, it's really good that you talk about it and that you need a sonogram when you have dense breasts. And you have to ask because it's not a requirement. It's not a requirement. It's not like they're going to no. tell. It's, I mean, maybe in some states, I should say. Maybe so, it, it is. It depends on the doctor. Right. But, um, but for me, I mean, it was literally like a letter in the mail after it said mm -hmm. normal. Yeah. So you do get these letters that tell you about your dense breasts mm -hmm. and that you have to pay specific attention and they're most concerned about dense breasts. Dense breasts also... Um, come hand in hand many times with fibroids. So if you have dense breasts, you should check um, with your gynecologist to find out if you have fibroids. You may find an interruption when you menstruate. You may find pain, extra pain, or a very mm -hmm. full feeling. And having that checked is really important, So important. Too. It's everything. Yeah. So now, so... So you find out. So I found that out right that, o right. So right away, I knew it wasn't good, and so I was forty one, divorced. I at the time was in a relationship that was not very supportive, um, and I lived alone with my two boys. I mean, they go to their dads, but mm -hmm. you know, for the most part, I'm mom. Mm -hmm. And so, 
I just remember thinking, like, how am I going to do this? So it turned out I needed a lumpectomy, aggressive chemotherapy, and then immunotherapy, two more drugs mm -hmm. for another year. So I had my, my treatment was about two years. Um, the first, so I had a lumpectomy. I didn't need to have a double mastectomy because the kind of mm -hmm. cancer I have is called HER2 positive, <clears throat> which means if the cancer comes back, it could come back anywhere in your body. Mm -hmm. Now the good news about it, it used to be considered really bad news, but now with, because of the advancements in medication, mm -hmm. Um, there's an immunotherapy drug, which actually is considered now a good thing mm -hmm. because this immunotherapy tackles the HER2. Yeah. So it's bad, but good. Yeah. The medicine works. Um, yeah, and the, there's so much progress. So and much. so much has moved forward with um, breast cancer and treating it and targeting. Right. It, so it's really, um, it's a horrible thing to have to go through and to be pushed into right. I mean, that space. But I mean, when yeah. you think when I, I'll never I was at a concert that night and my phone rang and they're like, you, it's cancer. And I'm like at the count. Yeah, at a that's my favorite. thing. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I just went right into like survival, but right. not more than survival, like living. Mm -hmm. I went into living mode, right. which is what I still do today. I live. I don't just survive mm -hmm. because you get one shot at this. Mm -hmm. Right. You better have fun mm -hmm. and enjoy yourself. Right. And so that's what I did. That sort, I mean, the fact that I was at a concert that night sort of set the tone for how I was going to yeah. get through everything. And the way I did get through everything was constantly planning fun things to look forward to. And I still do that today. Mm -hmm. um, my business partner, Melissa, threw me a surprise before chemo party. And my like <laughs> uh -huh. 20 best friends all were we they are wearing DA team shirts. <laughs> um, and then I planned like... I took my kids to Europe, which I had never done before after chemo. I planned an end of radiation party. I plan, you know, I just, mm -hmm. and to this day, you know, I don't know if it's now because I'm single and I'm really, I really want to put myself out there and mm -hmm. enjoy life. I, I just need to keep planning things mm -hmm. because I like to have things to look forward yep. to. And I really like to enjoy life. So it could be Great. something little as like mm -hmm. just making a plan with a friend that you haven't seen mm -hmm. that you mean to. You know, it doesn't have to be a grand yeah. plan all the time. Today, this was exciting for me. You know, it's like I, you need yeah. to book things yeah. and plan your life. Absolutely. And show up for your life. That is the best advice, and I do exactly the same thing. I am, I'm always feeling optimistic because... I plan, whether it's through the company, and I plan things that are fun and that new things I've never done before, but planning things that you can look forward to in, in, in the aging with power context, this is the best advice for everybody, but especially for the elderly who have their lives winding down and they really don't have anything That's to right. look forward to. That's right. And so if you have a grandparent who's alone or not having much to do, you should participate in plans for them yes. and, and setting phone call times and doing things and creating opportunities for them to look forward to something. Correct. Because whether you're lonely and you're 80 or lonely and you're 18, it's the same thing. That's right. And so having, making fun things to do and motivating yourself to do that mm -hmm. is, is a must. It's, it, it's healthy lifestyle. Yes. It's a must. And laughing and dancing and singing. And, and I have no moves, yeah. but I, and my kids will not let me dance or sing in public, but I do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I think karaoke and dance parties. Are we going to go? Are Can just, we go? I'm there. I'm there. I don't care if my voice Me is terrible. Too. And I have no moves. Uh, well, I, I think moves. I do. I think and I do. just I just keep going. <laughs> but I, I it's the it's so important and that advice that you gave yourself is brilliant advice for everyone and it is absolutely the truth. Every day of my life I've always thought that I I want my life to be fun 
no matter how horrible things are. Yes. There were times where I thought, oh my God, my business is going to close. I can't pay the rent. What am I going to do? I would find something to kind of give me hope. Even if it's a make-believe and it, it may not ever happen or it couldn't, I could look forward to making it happen. But also there is so much to learn from other people. And so mm. if you make a plan to go out, you never know who's going to sit next to you. That's exactly right? right. So, I mean, I just live by that. Mm -hmm. And I, you just never know. You and have to create opportunities exactly. for yourself. It's never, if you're a person who's going to sit home and like, watch other people's lives happen and hope that or it happens. Or watch other people's lives on Instagram. Right. It's not going it. to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You have to create yeah. it. You and I talked about traveling and traveling alone. Yes. I always traveled alone and I would meet so many people. When, um, and, and you talked about that, that that's really the key, right? right. Of just right. what does it hurt? It's a stranger. Right. Have a conversation unless it's some cuckoo bird stalking you. And how you, did but, you start doing that or why? Well, I got a job at um, an airline when I graduated from FIT so I could travel in the office, not as a stewardess. And um, every weekend I would go to London round trip for $29. Wow. And, and I traveled other places as well. And I just met people and spoke to people. And I was like, you know, I was 18. Right. And I learned that th this was like opening a world of people I'd never met before and things. And when I would go to London, I just met a ton of people and never thought to be afraid or to be shy about it because basically I'm shy, but I've learned how to come out of my shell and right. pretend. And you obviously are not shy and never had to learn how to come <laughs> out of your shell. But but the thing is, for, for people who are shy, I learned how to come out of my shell because I had a friend with your personality. And I always thought she can do anything because she can she can sell herself. She can talk about anything. She's not shy. So I imitated her because I couldn't pull that out of myself. And so for a long time, I imitated my friend for my business. I needed to. And then all of a sudden, I saw my personality taking over. And that's how I did it. And it was excruciating. Acting, Acting completely. That's amazing. Good for you, though, for... Well, you tried something new. So how well? So wow. you're gonna do it if you can't. Right. But you were always this yes. way, uh, even as a little girl. Yes, but you have to. You have to. By the way, sometimes you have to fake your confidence. You know, I mean, because actually now, I think I could. Now I can walk into a room that's full alone, which I learned to do when I got divorced because then you're invited places alone. Yeah. And I'm not, not going to just bring a date to bring a date, <laughs> okay. right? I'd rather no, meet uh, everyone never, else in the room. Yeah, yeah. So I think before that, it was also a maturity thing. Yeah. So I was always like outgoing, but no, I could probably, when I was married in younger years, I would not have felt comfortable walking mm. into a room alone. Now, I don't love it, but I can do it. Yeah. And I actually, like every time I, I would say to people who are shy, that's like a really good exercise mm -hmm. in coming, overcoming something. Yeah. Is go to an event alone. Go to a movie alone. Yeah. Yep. Go sit at a restaurant at Absolutely. a bar alone. And that's how you will learn. Because it's so yeah. good for, it's mm -hmm. so good for everyone to have the ability to do that. And you were saying traveling alone. I mean, I had never traveled alone before. Um, I'd find a girlfriend to go with or, you know, go with my kids. But this summer, I just, my kids were away. And I just, the thought of my mundane life every day, going to the gym, going to right. work, going to meet a friend for dinner or a date, I was like, I cannot do this. And I had my, enough miles on my credit card to book a free ticket to Portugal. And Good I choice. just, yeah, and I just, um, I went with no plans. My mother came with me for the first five days and then left. And I just, I had no plans. I would wake up every day. I was like, I want to decide every day 
what do I want to do? Who do I want to be? Where do mm. I want to go? And it, it's not, I'm not a loner. Mm. I mean, I would book tours or go meet people, uh -huh. you know, I, I enjoy that. Um, but I loved, especially as a mother, our, our lives are very structured with kids mm -hmm. for the most part. And so I just really wanted to just be and just wake up mm -hmm. every day and take a walk, wander, yeah. figure out where I wanted to be. And it's the best thing I ever yeah. did for myself. I can't wait to do it again. Now I'm like, mm -hmm. kids, go to your dad. Yeah. Like, I got to go away. I, I have to <laughs> say many years, um, I would do a lot of traveling myself, obviously for work, I travel so much. Um, I had a license in Japan for 25 years, four times a year. I would travel by myself, obviously licenses in Italy and in France. And, and I always felt really good about seeing myself in context of mm -hmm. this world. Mm -hmm. and having the ability to integrate with people who are quite different. And, right. um, and it's really important to do as much as you can as a person, not as Mrs. Somebody yes. or with your girlfriends who then re-identify right. a group, yeah. not a person. And, and being afraid, being fearful of the unknown, right. ha, like you do, is reframe it in your head mm -hmm. as an adventure. Correct. It's really, it's playing a game in your head. Right. And you can change, you turn the switch, you can change mm -hmm. every situation. Right, but also, um, especially for me to share with my kids, you know, my kids sometimes get annoyed at me that I'm working all the time or mm. I'm on my phone and they think I'm just like on social media, right. but I'm actually working. Um, but I say to them, well, I'm working and that's why I'm able to go away or mm -hmm. I'm able to buy you that New Jersey that you wanted, right. you know? And, it's, and they really understand my hard work mm -hmm. and how it actually pays off. Yeah. And to me, that's the most rewarding yeah. part of all of it yeah. is that it's not something being handed to me. It's yeah. not, you know, my kids really understand that I'm able to provide yeah. that life for myself. Well, I mean, it's a good lesson for them too because they'll understand that this is what a woman is about. Right. And that, that there's, um, your value is important for them and that they, in that context, the women they right. seek out right. or feel comfortable with will right. have the same values you right. have, which is great. Yeah. So let's talk about the mom part okay. of, of this whole scenario. So in um, a lot of the questions I get, especially in the 40s, so in your 40s, I'm just going to do a very brief thing, yeah. but your 40s are really fantastic because by the time you get to your 40s, you have sort of been developing your persona. Mm -hmm. And when you're in your 40s, you know who you are. Correct. You're, you got it down, you're at a plateau that you earned, and now you can sort of make shit happen. Love that. You can really make it happen, and you know it. And so going for it is really the, the big key here. And in your 40s also, you have already started to see, oh, I have a few little lines yes. from the sun that yep. never went away. Oh, or I more have, than a few. But, or I have, I feel like my skin's not the same, or my hair isn't exactly, so all of these things. Or, mm -hmm. I don't know, I used to feel a little thinner in my right. waist. And so you're noticing some things, and this can be even if it's somebody who works out and is religious Correct. about it, it's still yes. a reality. And so this is sort of the subtext to, to the 40s. And then while this is happening, there's the sort of the introduction of sort of these hormonal changes. Oh, I'm already there. That Surgery. happen. The, the <laughs> so hormonal changes mm -hmm. that happen. And, and eventually you are feeling an outer body experience where something is happening and you're just not feeling yourself ever. Moments of it, but then ever. And it starts to undermine this 
great plateau that you have going. And so that starts the dilemma. So in this dilemma, I always refer back to healthy lifestyle, right? If you're sleeping, you're eating properly, and you're working out, you, you can own it. I totally discourage drinking alcohol. When, on your 30, 40th birthday, you celebrate oh, with something else. I like else. wine. Well, <laughs> I like my wine. Well, <laughs> I might suggest <laughs> that you take a look at that. And, and if you do, make it minimal. Right. Make the glass smaller. Right. Do, do that because it's really, really, really critical. It makes a big difference. And if you go to my podcast, you'll see quotes from wow. doctors who all are I now know, saying so this, bad. especially, and there are different times that this is important, but in your 40s, it's really important. But adding to all of this, and I won't get into all the things you can do right. in your 40s that are tips, but alcohol is one I'm starting to talk more about because I keep hearing more and more right. data now. But you now also have children, and as a mother, so yes, you're a woman accomplishing wonderful things in her career, dealing with life's stuff, and you have children. So tell me what, how, how what your approach is, and your, your whole world is this mom's mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. that really is a support system for other mothers. Right. What, where do you find the best advice and the best support yeah. comes from? I think the most important thing is talking openly and honestly and not pretending that these mm -hmm. things aren't happening to you. So I have found, <clears throat> I mean, I've always been very honest. So by sharing whatever's going on with me, and then it opens it up for other people to have the conversation. Right. So that my friends and I can have the conversation. I have never done any work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but all of a sudden I started noticing. Now I had my ovaries out after mm -hmm. the cancer treatment. So I went into instant menopause. Although I actually went into menopause during chemo. But then it became permanent. Right. And then I started noticing, obviously, the sweating. I mean, I'm looking at some of your dresses, and I was at an event the other night, and I see all these young women wearing, like, sparkly, thick dresses with sleeves. And I said to my sister-in-law, clearly they haven't gone through menopause yet. Like, <laughs> I can't wear anything with sleeves, you know? Uh -huh. um, and by the way, like, the fact that I'm saying that, somebody else is going to be like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, just talking openly. But after I had my ovaries out, I started noticing under here, mm -hmm. Now, I have makeup and concealer and a lot of stuff on right now, but I had never felt so. I was thinking, oh, the elasticity in my skin mm -hmm. because of the hormones. And, and I started talking to friends, like, what do I do? And I found out that every one of my friends has done Botox, which is, was mind-blowing to me. And so? Well, I haven't done anything, but it just opened yeah. up to me. Maybe I will. I always said I never would. Mm -hmm. um, but I, don't, I can't say never now, mm -hmm. although I'm worried about medically, because I'm allergic to a lot of things now. Yeah. So I probably won't. But, you know, it made me realize not to judge others mm -hmm. either, right? Yeah. It, it I, hasn't been my thing. I agree. I, 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 think, it's, I think it's important um, to be open to everything. And, I mean, I'm, I'm, when it comes to anesthesia and a knife, that's sort of where I draw the line. Right. But I, I think it's, I think you should always find out if something medically is going to work right. for you. But I think it, it's important to have an open mind. Yes. However, it, you know, it, it's impossible for me to be going on 75 and not have lines on my face, right? <laughs> I have lines on my face. And, and they're, if I didn't, I would look weird, right? right? right. I would like, how, right. I have lines here. I would look like, Make believe and being honest is really important yes, for I me. Yes, I think it's everything. But I do think there are things that you can do, and acupuncture facelifts are a big, big thing for me, and something you would absolutely love. What is that? Well, um, I acupuncture. I have a podcast now that it is the last one I did with an acupuncture doctor that I sought out and. 
and I love you to listen to I it, will. and you might have an open mind okay. to it because it affects your whole yes. body and your well, face. Yes, that acupuncture. Well, so but right. there you can do it for wow. your face. So there are a number mm. of things. Right. I mean, uh, I'm and I don't know all the things that people do, but there are a number of things that you could try. Yes, and if it feels right for you, I think it's good. But I think. Working out, so that's everything. To is me. everything everything, and that's why you look as good as you do because working out has everything to do with. I mean, uh, this is something that you can't get rid of. Your it's your genetic, skin right? here. No, you as you age, your right. your skin gets looser and everything oh, drops. Right. But I think I would have more if I didn't work out yes. every day. Yes. Right, and if I didn't work out every day, my face, face. would right. be dropping mm -hmm. more than it does. That and alcohol again, which is very aging, and food like sugar, right? Very aging. Well, I changed everything when I was sick. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was I was always a healthy eater, but um, well, I worked out throughout chemo, which sounds crazy but you do as for much as you mind, can it's, very it's, important. it's for your mind yeah. so i didn't have i would go to spin class on days that i could mm -hmm. usually the week after chemo but i didn't sweat you do what you can you just do yeah. it's it's more the very mental important. and the emotional just yeah. to be there be a part of something that feels normal for your life mm -hmm. and um so when you had your ovaries out mm -hmm. and did you um do any hormone replacement? I can't that, because of can't. the kind of cancer that I have. Okay. So that's that's been a little tricky. Well, I was worried. Are you talking about relationship-wise? No. Oh. Just no. Okay. No. <laughs> I was there's worried a, about that. That's not, no. You, um, there's always, where there's a no. will, there's a way. Yeah, I can't. Um, I, I'm estrogen positive. Oh, okay. So I can't do any hormone replacement. And that's the key to always... Find out what works for yes. everyone individually. It's really important yeah. because there are there are things you can do. The worst thing to do, and and I was having lunch with someone last week, and they said the doctor prescribed antidepressants, and I said, please do not, because your body produces serotonin, and when the serotonin drops, and it often does when you go into menopause or even perimenopause, that's when you feel depressed and yes. you don't feel good. And what's the medicine for serotonin? Doctors on my podcast, do you know what the medicine Working is? Working out. Working out, eating healthy, eating healthy, staying away from those negatives, mm -hmm. and sleep. It's everything. And that's how you raise your serotonin. Mm -hmm. Antidepressants replace the serotonin, and so it, the serotonin goes down, down, mm -hmm. down. The antidepressants then right. become it. And when you want to stop, you're at rock bottom, right. and it's rough. Right. I mean, I see it in my, my older son specifically, who really needs to do a physical activity every day. Right. And whether it's yoga or hiking or just being outside, it changes everything. Yeah, everything. It does. I, I, I'm, I am one of those people, too, I where it's I everything. have to. I crave it. And if I miss a class, I love classes because they're very competitive. And, of right. course, when you have personality that's competitive, it's, it makes it better. But... I always, I find something before the day ends so that I do that and I feel so much better, not just physically, but emotionally, to it's just everything. be, have all of that ugh, out, right. and then it's like a... Well, I saw on your door the sign that you have meditation here every day. Yes, we do. I mean, that, shouldn't every business do that? I, I... You know, in the Middle East, they have a call to prayer. If you've ever traveled in the Middle East and everybody stops five times a day, they close their shops, they do everything, and they all run off and short prayer, and then they go back to work. And to me, it's brilliant because they're all stopping 
and not thinking about their businesses, not thinking about everything, and they're focused on whether it's a prayer or whatever. Right. And meditation to me is the same thing. And I wish that everybody had to do it, and you know, you stop mm -hmm. and you do it. Since that is not going to happen in a democratic country, <laughs> we um, we definitely can impose it on ourselves. Right. And this was my staff actually. Um, every prior to New Year's, we all talk about our New Year's resolutions, and they were mostly were saying, "I'm thinking about meditating, or I'm going to continue to meditate." And I said, "Well, I'll bring somebody in, Amazing. and we'll do it." And and this is our second year, which I'm thrilled about. That is so great. And some of them are going to go on meditation retreats and are really have seen their lives change wow. dramatically. Wow. And so uh, I'm doing it with my guy now, who is the last meditator on earth, and he is starting to do it as well. And it really is extremely helpful at any age. Yes. And, uh, and, and it probably and a makes great tool. everybody the mood also here, right? It, it really does. Yeah. It really is super helpful. Do you meditate? A little bit. I try to do like five. I started with five minutes. So my son, like <clears throat> I said, the one that does the hiking. And so he does it um, and has taught me, actually. It's really... Um, and we do, like, yeah. in the morning, like, what we're grateful yeah. for, and we, do, yes. and we set intentions for the day, mm -hmm. and we talk about expectations, mm -hmm. so it's... it's re I mean, it's, you're great, because that's exactly... I'm learning. The, <laughs> but it's, it's really what kids yeah. thrive on it's when so you give them that. that. Um, my, um, the guy I'm with has the most adorable grandchildren, and so for New Year's, I gave them both um, books on uh, so they could put what they're grateful for each day in the book and Amazing. then at the end of the year we're going to exchange them and read each other's gratitude. Oh, that's gratitude. a great idea. Yeah. Oh, I so need to get that. So that's our tradition <gasps> that we're starting. I love that. Yeah, so I'm writing mine and they're writing theirs and yeah. So I, like you said, it's just creating these rituals yes. at an early age yes. that change you know everything the same with food how do you how do you handle food and your kids and the relationship oh, they have with right. food so i'm not the best with food because i'm picky i'm better than i used to be so my older son actually is uh, a very good eater and probably used to eat too much and it, I think everything also is how you phrase things. And mm -hmm. so, so I would just say to him, like, we have to make healthier choices, right? Um, I don't ever want to um, tell him he can't have something, right. right? So it's just we have to make healthier choices, and it's about portion size. My younger son is very picky, probably worse than I was. He eats, like, five, ten things. Um, really? Yeah. But I understand that. Now, my parents used to... I mean, my parents are wonderful, but they did used to force me to eat things, and I think I'm damaged from it. Um, I call myself a quirky eater. I don't mm -hmm. eat seafood. I don't eat meat. I yeah. eat chicken. Mm -hmm. So, like, I call myself a fake vegetarian, but mostly a vegetarian. But my, um, my younger son, I vowed to never force him to eat anything, mm -hmm. and his dad does not agree with me on that. So his dad will try to get him to try new things. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really force him, but I'm just like, let it go. Mm. Just let it go. I think the more that you force or talk about something, yeah, it, becomes it becomes a bigger a issue. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I respect my son for his wishes. I've started to hide things in shakes that I make, which he does not know about, <laughs> which I don't know if I fully support, but I do. He likes banana almond milk shakes that there I make for him. So I stick in chia seeds and yeah. kale, and yeah. he doesn't know. Yeah. So it's not hurting him. Yeah. No, I, I think that's great. I, I think that's a perfect way yeah. to, if, even for us. I mean, if, if I have a really busy day and I miss having something to eat, there sometimes the day goes by and I'm like, oh, my God, I, I didn't eat. 
I oh, I've never third, missed a meal. <laughs> well, but sometimes it's a fitting area, right. and then right. I just don't have time. Right. So I'll I'll make a, a shake or a smoothie, and I'll put in all the greens and right. all the powders yes. to just make sure that I didn't blow a day of not mm -hmm. having any nutrition. Right. And that, and I think with kids, that's the great way to do it, right. especially if you have a banana in right. there or something. I only wish I had done it sooner. <laughs> Well, just but, but you know what? They, there wasn't right. as much access to right. really great nutritional supplements that you and could put in. And it wasn't always as important to me. But mm -hmm. as we get older and realize how important it is, it became more important to yeah. me for my kids. Yeah, starting young yeah. and they start to develop a taste for right. good food. And I didn't do that. I yeah. definitely oh, failed it's very in that hard. way. It's yeah. very hard because everything... I mean, if you go in a supermarket aisle after aisle, there's food that will kill you. Yes. A absolutely food that will yeah. kill you. I I've gone up and down aisles in supermarkets, and I do it like a drive-by because I was like, <laughs> there's nothing here, nothing right. here. And, and it's, it's, it's a sin that that's what we have right. to offer to a population, and healthcare is so expensive. And time Insurance consuming. Is and, so, right. It's so expensive. So how can we change overall health and perception of how to eat mm -hmm. with kids if every aisle is contaminated so with toxic it's food? So, it's so bad. I know. I only wish, actually, it was more important to me when my kids were younger. So, but that uh, comes with age. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what's the... the um, so your your whole mom's approach mm -hmm. with the women you share mm -hmm. these conversations mm -hmm. with, what's the, the most talked about topic for mothers who have careers mm -hmm. and um, are trying to balance everything, yeah. single or married? Yeah, I'm, a, a couple things. I mean, one of the questions that always comes up is doing it all. Right, and I think we I spoke mm -hmm. about this last time. Yeah. My whole thing is, you know, everyone's all is different. So I, you know, it's it's to me sort of a silly question because my all is different than your all, right? So I might be doing my all today, and you might look at me and be like, "That's crazy, Denise. That is so not <laughs> all, right?" But right. for me, it is. Right. So it doesn't matter what yeah. it is for you. Yeah. And so that's that's one topic that people love to debate. Um, can women have it all? Well, of course you can, because you're all different. You might go to work and come home and not make dinner, and that's good enough for you. Mm -hmm. You know, for somebody else who wants to sit at, you know, a family dinner at 6 p.m., four courses cooked, like, that would never be imp important mm -hmm. to me, mm -hmm. you know? So that's one topic that I think people talk about. The other one that we love talking about now that, that I think is really um, just women um, going back to work. A lot of women that I know have either taken off and or or not necessarily going back to work or switching careers mm -hmm. um, as the kids get older. Right. And that's a topic I love because I, and it's something I'm also experiencing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like I said, my business started one way and we've sort of just, we didn't have a business plan, which we sort of used to joke about, but I'm glad we didn't because if mm -hmm. we did, it would just be, it, it would have been it so have broken. small yeah. and it yeah. wouldn't have yeah. gone anywhere yeah. and so um, and for some people that doesn't work obviously but um, I think the ability to change directions is powerful mm. um, and it, it, it can, you know it, not everybody can do it right I mean some people mm -hmm. can't just pick up and leave their jobs and I didn't do that either I mean I started my company while I was still working full time yeah. for three years. And we did this on the side, mm -hmm. which I think is some, r the realistic yeah, way to start a business. Yeah, that's the best advice. And so yeah. I think just because you might need that paycheck every, day, every week or every other mm -hmm. week, it doesn't mean that you're stuck. It mm -hmm. just means that you might have to work harder. And it's a, it may take a little bit longer, right. but it's done the right way. Right, and so, and then you'll know when you're able to, you know, yeah. we, Melissa and I both worked for three years at another job did this at night and on the side. And we knew when we were able to quit our jobs yeah. because we were finally making money yeah. to support ourselves um, as much as we needed to at that point. And so 
And even now, there's still more that we both want to do together and separately. Mm -hmm. And we support each other in that. And we still are working hard with our mm -hmm. core business, which supports our families. Um, but there's so much more that we both want to do. Mm -hmm. And we just support each other in that. So I think also women supporting women yeah. is everything. Yeah. And, and Very you know, helpful. just the, yeah. the, meeting you, I mean, that's how I felt. And um, it's women supporting women with whatever you want to do. If you want to change your jobs, if you are hate what you're doing, you know, I just, I believe you have to really just, it, you can't do anything successfully if you don't love it. Mm. So, you know, and a lot Critical. of people feel stuck, but again, you can start something on the side, hopefully. So I'm, I'm interested in your, um, your advice on this. So one, um, question, and I interview so many women through the years, and um, uh, whenever I interview mothers who have careers and they're um, trying to make it work, the, the, the thing that frustrates them the most is that they have kids, kid or kids, and they have a job, and they're in a competitive environment. Every workplace has some sort of competitive edge to it. Um, and even if it's a friendly, I, we have a very friendly company, but if your kid gets sick a lot, mm, it's so hard. <laughs> and you have to leave work, and you have to do it a number of times, or the nanny doesn't show up, or something happens at school, oh all of these things, you start to feel so guilty that you start telling little white lies because it can't always it's be so about awful. your kid. Right. And so then the little white lies start compounding themselves and right. you're feeling like crap for doing mm -hmm. it. And as an employer and, mm -hmm. a, and a woman. Right, it's like the um, excuses. I'm, no, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that this has to happen. And without understanding totally, and I don't know that there is a, a solution to right. this yet, so there's hard. little mini steps. Right. But one of the things that I do is I am very open with the women who have children to say, make sure that when, when, not if, because if is right. fallacy, when you need to do whatever you need to do. You have a backup plan. Correct. So other people can follow up, take care That's of great. something, or that you have a way to do it so that you don't feel guilty about leaving. Correct. And that you have an open conversation with everybody about this. And sometimes people take off a day, there's a recital or something like that. And, and I think one, and I don't think it's the total solution yet, and I don't know if it works everywhere, mm -hmm. just we have so many women here that there's a great support team. But I think being more open mm -hmm. is super helpful in certain environments, right. but environments where there are mostly men, what do you, what, what is your recommendation? Right. Besides still things. being open, so yeah. So I... It was very important to me early on, even when I was married, that their dad was at things too. So even though maybe he made more money, and I think that's probably why a lot of it falls on the women who are not making as much money, so their job is therefore mm -hmm. less important, right. right? But I, when I, with my ex-husband, who at the time when we were married, I made it, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna do things equally, right? We're not gonna, we're gonna cross like the typical gender parent. Mm -hmm roles here. It, I'm going to take off for something, you're going to take off for something. Because it cannot always, my, even though you made more money than mm -hmm. me, my career is just as important to me. Yeah. And so that's the first thing I did. I think that mothers and fathers, whether you're together or not, mm -hmm. really have to divide the parenting roles yeah. so that it doesn't always fall on the mother. Because if she's making less money, her job is still very important. Yeah. So I think that's the first thing. Yeah. I think now my kids are in public school. I don't know. Um, there are way too many things that parents need to be at at school. And that was always very stressful for me. I don't think that parents need to be so involved. And 
you don't need to be in everything. And I so also, what, what are the things like? Well, I think you have to prioritize, right? First of all, again, if there's a, I mean, it just seems like in elementary school, every Friday there's like a reading party of this and mm -hmm. that, you know, you can't be in everything. Yeah. So choose maybe once a month you're there or you're there one month and then you're, you know, the other parent is there the next month. Um, you just don't have to be in everything mm -hmm. and you're, and it's okay. And you definitely don't need two parents at everything, you know? I mean, you both do not be, need to be taking off, mm. you know? Now, today, it's hard because a lot of parents work from home, so they have the flexibility. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard to not feel guilty when your kid doesn't have someone there. Right. But you have to form a community around your children also because you cannot be at every reading party or every <laughs> cupcake party at school. Right. I mean, you just don't. There's right. just no need for that. That's just too crazy to me. Um, grandparents, babysitters are good for that too. Friends, my friend's family doesn't live here and she had to be at one kid's thing. So I was like, I'll go to your daughter's thing. So I went to her and she mm -hmm. was, it was like a special guest. Yeah. You know, yeah. you have to have, it really is. You That's need, a great idea. You need a community. Yeah. You, you know what? You, as a mother, I think the most important time that you need to be there for your kids is when they're sick. My son has been homesick for eight days. <laughs> okay, which really is horrible. <laughs> but um, my mother's there right now, and a sitter is coming later because I canceled everything last week, but I also work for myself. If I worked for somebody else, I would have been yeah. beyond yeah. guilty, upset. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I had something I couldn't miss last week. And so I didn't have a sitter or my mother. I didn't want her to get sick. So their dad actually came to babysit at my house because I didn't want to send my son to his house and get everybody, because, yeah. and get everybody sick over there. So, you know, you have to work together, with whoever your, you yeah. know, parenting partner is. Um, I think it's really important to just, like, build a community of friends, you know. That's a great idea. You, ha you know, and or even find a person in the class, a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home parent, and say, I can't come. Can you be my kid's parent mm -hmm. that day? You know, you really have to surround yourself. Obviously, there's a dance recital or a game mm -hmm. a lot, hopefully, on the weekends, you know. Um, but I think also, especially with being able to work virtually today, Next you know, yeah. I think it really helps. As long, and that's on the the person. Get your work done. Mm. And uh, another thing is, um, I was at the gym and um, there, there's a great trainer who um, is just fantastic and she just had a baby and her baby's six months old. And another woman at the gym said to her, I need, you need to have a mom to connect, you need to connect with moms now. And I have a friend was a baby who's six months old also, and she needs a friend, so the two of you <laughs> need to connect with each other. And she was so excited. She said, I'm so happy. I don't know who to talk to about oh. all this stuff that's going on, and I feel like I'm imposing on other people. Right. But I thought that, first of all, that was such a generous, that is so brilliant nice. act. Right. But uh, not only that, but I do think. That's why we started the you, moms. I, we needed the community. That's where I'm going, <laughs> that it makes so much sense to have a community that people can really go to yeah. with questions and Support. Well, I mean, we don't know everything, but it's just... Well, you have you know what, experience. But you know what Melissa and I always say is, and we are so different, um, especially we used to have a TV show, and so we would start at the top of the show talking about different topics, and her and I never had the same opinion. It just... Really? No, so, and so we used to laugh at it, and we'd say, oh, people, somebody might, again, not like me, for right. some, but like... So, and that's what we were yeah. doing. That's why we started this was really... We were just like any group of friends yeah. talking and like any group of friends. Yeah. You might not agree with all of your friends on something, but you can take little pieces yeah. from everyone. And that's what's so important about having a community. Yeah. And, and I do think there's great value in having friends that have a completely different point of view right. about many things. Right. Because what it does is it takes us away from just hearing the echo of our own voice right. and agreeing with ourselves instead of listening and finding out why people think in mm -hmm. a different way or what makes them think that way and being more tolerant and, and learning. I mean, that there is another way to do that. Maybe yes. they might be, maybe they might have something 
to learn too. Uh, and so I, I think we always tend to hover around people who all think the mm -hmm. same. But I'm, I've learned in my, in the last probably 15 years that the more diverse mm -hmm. in opinion my mm -hmm. friends are, the better um, friendships I have. Because you Do you feel really, that way in these political uh, times? Absolutely. Really? It's absolutely. harder? Um, well, a lot of my friends I've always been friends with. And when you love them right. because of things that you share together, it's easier to have an open mind about why they think a certain way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you meet someone new and they have a harsh opinion about something, it, it takes a lot right. to sort of chill and be open and listen to it. So having, having a history is very meaningful. And I also think keeping those friends is critical to the balance we need about life mm -hmm. and that everything can't be a total agreement and that you learn how to compromise. So what happens at the end of a political conversation or a conversation about parenting or whatever mm -hmm. is you find a way to compromise for the good of the longevity right. of that relationship. Right. And people do it in marriages and people do it in friendships. And I think that that's really... Um, comes with menopause. <laughs> because what happens is once you're in full out menopause, which you are not yet. No, I am. No, you, you still. There's something, um, I know you are in, in one oh, respect, okay. but then there's, you'll. Oh, there's more? No, but you'll start, you'll start to feel there's, the, there's an evolution right. that comes to 50 oh. by the time you're 50. Okay. There's, it's not just menopause, it. but okay. it's sort of in that cycle. Okay. There's a calm and a, a peace and a tolerance that allows patience. Oh, I'm there. Are you there? I think so. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you more off camera. Because, because <laughs> the patience and that tolerance mm -hmm. is, gives you the ability mm -hmm. to listen to things that are so different from a belief system oh, you may it. have okay. that give you mm -hmm. the um, ability to understand. Mm -hmm. because, because somebody has a different opinion doesn't mean they're wrong. Right. And doesn't mean you're right. It's a different opinion. Right. And very few people that you or I are going to meet are, are, you know, crazy killers. Right. You know, they're not wild lunatics. It's just somebody with a very different right. opinion. Mm -hmm. And there is a, there's something really special about allowing yourself mm -hmm. to be patient and mm -hmm. understanding. And that truly comes with age. Got it. You're you're still frisky. Yeah. You still, but but um, and it doesn't mean that I'm not either. But but that patience. Yes. Um, I had I had to wait a long time to get to oh, that okay. point. Okay. I'm there in, but in by, one way. By the, but by the yeah. time you're in, by the time you move into fifty, you'll understand. Like fifty plus, you'll understand what that is, and it's actually. A, an amazing part of the I next part of your life. I see that in my mother, actually. I know what you're talking about. It's wisdom the, yes. because you're not controlled by that, that electric energy, yes. that hormonal energy, or that. It, it's, it's part of who you are right. through this process. Yeah. But then um, that's when you have a whole other set of advantages. Right. That you don't, you know, something to look forward to. I have lots to look forward to. So do you see yourself married again? I see myself with someone. I don't know if I feel like I need to get married, mm -hmm. but I really do love being in a relationship. That's good, which I haven't had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but... Um, 
I really, I really, I was in a relationship for five years that was not good. Mm -hmm. And there were parts of it that were fun and that I loved. And I loved that part of it. Mm -hmm. um, I should have gotten out sooner because there were so many things about it that were not healthy for me. Yeah. Um, but I would like to meet somebody. See, I think a lot of women feel that they better hold on to what they have because there may not be anything well, else. And, and it's right. And that's dangerous. And so, and by the way, I, which is shocking, so I didn't do that with my marriage. <clears throat> and it wasn't a bad situation. We just didn't like each other. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I got out, uh -huh. and I had the strength to know that this wasn't going to be okay. Right. And then I was in this relationship. But I think I, I give myself a little bit of leeway because I was sick. Mm. And I felt like, how would I find somebody else again right. while I'm sick? And also to put my kids through that. You know, I was really hopeful. Mm. But it a was, lot, but of all women, I think, scary, because, right. because it is because men tend to go for the decade younger right. to, to, to date right. that age right. group younger, that there's the belief system that, oh right. my God, I won't meet the man I deserve right. or the person I deserve. Right. And, but I do believe that you will find that person and your spirit is so strong, how could you not? But it's... Different well, it's for everyone. The, because it's a because men. Are you going to say are threatened by you? <laughs> I was going to use different words. What words? Um, I think men don't always feel comfortable with a strong woman. That's why. Right. It took me till I was sixty-five to meet the guy I'm with. And he's amazing. Beyond. And he's my soulmate. And so... Does he have a brother, a younger brother? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, it takes that. And you have to understand that you have to be with the man you deserve. Right. You can't, and I'm telling you from experience, you can't allow yourself to accept or pretend that this is going to be okay right. because it's not going to be okay. And I okay. did that. It's not, it never okay. I pretended a okay. hundred times. Never, I mean, by the third year, I would like, okay, I'm not pretending anymore. And that relationship would like end. But you were strong second. enough to. Well, I mean, I've tried because I thought, well, it's fun to be with someone doing things. But, but in the end, you can't pretend. You have to be who you are right. at its fullest. Right. And the person you're with should be in joy over it. So right. the guy I'm with is just thrilled right. by what I think about and what I'm doing. Amazing. And so, but I didn't really think that that was going to happen. But I realize now that it, it can always happen is always possible and I think you would be surprised at how a positive attitude like you have draws that draws people right. like that to you. Well I'm certainly trying. <laughs> I'm out there. I mean well, but, you have to let people know, too, so that it's you hard. want to meet people. Right. So mo this is what I have found. Most people will not set people up today because, A, they think you don't need their help, or, B, they don't want to feel responsible if it doesn't work out. And they, they think, oh, you know, there's so many apps, which I'm on, mm -hmm. um, so it's easy to meet people. And it's so rare that you're just going to go out mm -hmm. and stand in a bar. I'm not no going to do bars that. Are not and so, um, so it's so I do meet people on the apps, um, and then I try to have a phone call because I can't waste time going out with somebody who on the phone yeah. sounds miserable. Um, so I'm 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 enjoying meeting the people that don't sound miserable. <laughs> but I, I think you you need to tell people that you want to meet them because. I was introduced to this guy, and every time I meet people who look 
like soulmates or close mm -hmm. to it. It was an introduction. Yes, I know. And, and people will, I think, if they say, oh my God, this person looks like they, but they have to know. Right. And I think the more people that say, right. you know what, I, I'm available. Know. Yeah, I'm available. I'm <laughs> Do you know what I just lady. did? <laughs> I actually read an article about somebody who is like, dynamic and amazing and divorced and it said his wife left him and I was like and he's seems so cool and so we have a friend in common and so I messaged my friend saying hey is uh, absolutely and I had never done that before why not and I said hey is so and so single um if so just wanted to put it out there that I'm also single um and he wrote back right away and he said he's actually dating somebody right now but if he winds up breaking up with her, I will absolutely let absolutely. him know about you. That, and I was like, I'm so happy that I did that. Absolutely. I mean. Uh, you know, I, I may listen to a podcast or meet somebody somewhere, and then I hear about someone, and I want to meet them. You can ask Tanner. I'm like, I want to meet that person, and I, not to date. Right. But, but I want to meet them. I want to know them. They're doing great things. Right. And people are very open. Yes. And so I believe that if you're listening to a podcast or you have some, something somewhere and you think, I feel very connected yes. to that person, I say, shoot them an email. Find right. out how to connect. Well, I came up what to do you, you have to lose, at right? the event we were both speaking at. And I knew who you were, obviously. Um, and I do events with famous people all the time. Mm -hmm. And I never feel the need to go say hello or take a picture. But listening to you speak, I went up to you and I said to you, I just wanted to introduce myself. And then you said the kindest things about what I was speaking about. But I just felt listening to you was so, you were just so amazing and cool and normal. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy for you because I, I'm so, um, grateful that you are here to show what spirit and what positive thinking is about. And I'm sure every day is imperfect, but that you say, okay, enough. Now I'm going back into my fool right. myself or do whatever right. to get like to what the you next. Did. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, look, there are some people that are born with imbalances and, you know, but for me, how I feel every day is a choice. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't born with imbalances. I, I was born with drama, and there's a lot of drama <laughs> in life, right? And it still happens, but how you handle mm -hmm. it and how you decide to look at every day is a choice yeah. for me, not yeah. for everybody. No, I think it is for everybody, but it's, it, it takes work, and it's not, and it takes work to make a relationship work, and it takes work to find the people you want to be with, and whether it's men or women or whoever, I am a believer, if I weren't with my guy now, um, I would reach out. If somebody sounded great or was doing something great, I would reach out. If they were single, fabulous. If not, what do you have to lose? Nothing. You do it for Nothing. business. Well, exactly. You That's do what I was it thinking. for business. That's exactly right. And, it, and a no is okay in business, yes. right? So get over the personal whatever, That's and right. a no is a no. I've learned for, through the 50 years, I've heard so many no's and so many rejections and so many, well, it's not right for us or whatever, and I live through it. And well, then, It just makes you move on to the next. And you understand that that no was very complicated. It had a lot of backstory. It didn't necessarily have everything to do with you. So say you reach out and somebody is seeing someone, they may break up with that person right. and you don't know. Right. And not that you want to be involved in that process, right. but putting it out there to friends, putting it out there to people that are interesting to you. Right now, there is no better time for women to be more upfront the way a guy would be. Men are very nervous now. Yes. And they're very shy about reaching out. Right. So I think it, it's okay 
to take the burden off yes, of them. I know. And whoever it is that you're attracted to, or whatever it is that you like about that person, I say even if it's a woman who's doing something great and you want right. to connect with them. I agree. I think doing that kind of thing for women is a must. And I, I really, I think that I, I definitely want to keep in touch with you and keep connected and see all the things you're doing in your life and make you a part of what I'm doing because you're very it. special. You are so special. And I'm, I'm sure you've been an incredible inspiration to everybody listening well, to this. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Yeah. You are, I mean, dreamy. <laughs>